Hello and welcome to Christian Sisters Fellowship. I'm Deborah Callahan, your host, along with Joanna Williams, our co-host. And Joanna, at this time, will introduce our very special guest with us today. I'm very happy to introduce the guest on the program today. To my right are Lottie Walker, Ann Jackson, Maria Cavacante, Paula Thomas, and of course our host, uh, Deborah Callahan. I'd like to give a shout out to uh, Bishop Blake to Dr. Tanya Lewis, we love you and we thank you for encouraging us yes. and supporting our ministry. And I too would like to give a shout out to those two very special people, Dr. Lewis and Bishop Blake. We certainly thank you for this opportunity and we love you very much. God bless you. And to our guests, I would like to say, you know, I said I'm going to stop calling you guests. You're not guests, you're on every show to our <laughs> Christian yes. Sisters yes. because our show is entitled Christian Sisters Fellowship. So. These are our Christian sisters, and welcome, Christian sisters. Thank you. Thank you. And what I usually like to do is to get you kind of relaxed so we could start our discussion, and I do that with a joke. So are you ready for my joke? Yes. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and this one is, which way to heaven? Mm. Reverend Billy Graham, and I understand this is, um, well, this is one he told, so I don't know how true mm -hmm. it is, but this <laughs> is a joke he told. Reverend Billy Graham tells of a time early in his ministry when he arrived in a small town to preach a sermon. So, uh, wanting to mail a letter, he asked a young boy where the post office was. Uh, when the boy had told him, Dr. Graham thanked him and said, you know, if you come to the Baptist church this evening, you can hear me telling everyone how to get to heaven. The boy replied, I don't think I'll be there. You don't even know how to get to the post office. <laughs> 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 so I thought that was a cute one. <laughs> so um, again, thank you for being on the show. And I'm going to ask Joanna to tell our audience about Christian Sisters Fellowship, okay. who we are, yeah. and how to get in contact okay. with us. Uh, the Word of God is so important for Christians, for believers, because God tells us how to live a holy and righteous life before Him. And so the Christian sisters meet once a month to study His Word. And we're studying the end times now, but today's program is on women of the uh, New Testament. And God's Word helps us because we can put on the full armor of God so that we can fight against Satan and his cohorts. God also asked us to go out into the world and preach His Word. And so the Word of God is so important that we keep it in our hearts that we may not sin against Him. And we would encourage you to write, email, or write us. We'd love to hear from you. We want to hear your comments to encourage us. Very good. And we want you to tune in with us and treat this as a Bible study for you today. So get your Bible and paper and pencil not only to get our contact information, but to follow along and take notes. And if you have any questions or uh, you want to make recommendations on how we can improve the show, then you can jot those down and contact us. But we want you to take this, consider this your Bible, your at-home Bible study with Christian Sisters. Um, today we are studying Mary and Martha facing death and grief. So you can turn your Bibles to, to John 11, chapter 11, John, verses 1 through 44. We'll be covering all of those verses today. But as Joanna mentioned, we're studying women of the New Testament, and this is our book that we study from. And uh, always there's a little introductory to our show, so I'd like a brief paragraph from the book. So I'd like to read that, and after that we'll get started with our discussion. Um, the Sunday school lesson was about Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Jill was abrupt, typically honest and refreshing. It isn't fair, she said, when my friends die, when my friend dies, I have to deal with it. When Jesus' friend dies, he just raises them from the dead. <laughs> <laughs> Though Jill's feelings were legitimate, there is much more to John 11. Jesus is not just avoiding the sting of death by raising the friend's, 
friend Lazarus from the dead. So at this time, we're going to begin our discussion. But before we do, I'm going to ask Joanna to read our power verse for today. And usually we give you um, a power verse. These are mem verses for you to commit to memory because we want you to have a stockpile of verses hidden in your heart to fight off Satan or to keep from sinning against God. Because as Psalms 119.11 states, Your word have I hidden in my heart so that I may not sin against thee. So this is what our power verse is all about. So it's a little short one. So you can follow. You can This one I know you can commit to memory because you've probably heard it quite a few times. So okay. Joanna, we give our power verse yes. for today. Our power verse comes from Psalms chapter 30, verse 5. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Very mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. And you'll see in this lesson, weeping did endure for only a night, and joy did come in the morning. I don't think they waited till the morning for the joy <laughs> to come. <laughs> it came instantly. So we will begin our discussion, and so I'm going to ask Joanna to begin the questioning. Okay. Describe Jesus' relationship with Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. Well, I for one think that uh, Mary had a beautiful relationship with him simply because she was the one that anointed his head and feet and washed his feet with her hair. And so she was very close to him. And of course, Martha and Lazarus being sisters and brothers, they uh, loved him and they knew him. You know, he were, they were the, his friends. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Jesus loved Martha and Mary and their brother. Mm -hmm. And also, Jesus did call Lazarus his friend. Mm -hmm. So they was very close. And he really cared so much for um, Lazarus because, you know, um, Jesus, he would take that risk, which he almost did. He took that risk of, mm -hmm. for his life to um, go to the grave, even though the Pharisees and the Strides was after him. God, he had such a relationship with them, you know, that whenever he was in town, that's yes, where yeah. he went. So that's he right. loved them and visited them frequently. Right. According to um, our daily lives, this was a situation where uh, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were like really good friends of Christ. You know, they were like family friends to him. Mm -hmm. And he loved them, and they loved him. Okay. What are Jesus' primary objectives in this episode of Lazarus' sickness? Well, to give glory to God. Yes. To give glory to God, you know, not himself. but And his God. kingdom and, and his for kingdom. the ultimate eternal good mm -hmm. of sufferers. Mm -hmm. He wanted also to teach the disciples to mm -hmm. learn to believe. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. And this was a sickness not unto death, but the glory of God that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Okay, let's compare and contrast the ways that Martha and Mary each responded to Jesus and he, him to them. Well, Martha ran unto Jesus um, when she discovered Jesus was coming and um, also, they both said the exact same question, and it's, I'm reading from John, verse 21. And um, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give thee, give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thou brother shall rise again. Mm -hmm. Martha said unto her, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. But Jesus responded to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believe in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Okay, okay and I said, you know, they responded differently and yes. communicated yes. their faith differently. Yes. Because, you know, Martha dashed out right away right. Mm -hmm. and went to him and asked him that. And uh, Mary, of course, was in a melancholy mood, you right. know, sad and just just there. I don't even think she heard Martha when mm -hmm. she said that until later when Martha told her that Jesus um, was there. Mm -hmm. uh, because they had sent for him earlier. Right. That's mm -hmm. why yes. he had come. 
and in, and the way that Jesus responded to them, he considered um, their individual personalities mm -hmm, and the mm -hmm. way that he responded to them. Mm -hmm. um, and he told, as he expressed and told um, Martha that I am the, the, the resurrection of life, mm -hmm. the, you know, and then went to Mary and Mary being mm -hmm. sad and he, you know, almost like go and put his arms around her mm -hmm. and being sensitive to her feelings and, and really um, grieving mm -hmm. with her. Yes. Yeah, but, I, but Mary was upset that he came later. Mm -hmm. You know, she was praying that he would come sooner when he didn't. So that was a contrast mm -hmm. that Martha already knew what he was going to do. And Mary, she, she, doubt, she didn't doubt him, but she just wondered why he wasn't there. Mm -hmm. you know? But then when she saw him, Mary did run. Mm -hmm. And she, the uh, difference is she fell down at his, his feet, feet. Yes. Yeah. Yes. and uh, worshipped him. You know, I thought it was so interesting. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought it was so interesting that Jesus, being the Christ, was able to have the same kind of compassion yes. that man has. Yeah. You know, he, he talked to Martha, who was prob probably a stronger woman, mm -hmm. about his being the Christ and and if you believe in me, you know, you, you, you never die. Mm -hmm. But when Mary came up, who was a more sensitive person, Jesus responded in, to her so, so much that he even wept. Mm -hmm. You know, he felt her pain and he was compassionate to her. Mm -hmm. And that was so interesting to me that Christ did that for yes. a human being, you know. Mm -hmm. And like the scripture said, we have not a high priest who could be touched with yes. the feeling of our infirmity. Yes. Right. And he groaned in his spirit twice. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and he was wept. Yes. And he yeah. wept. Yes. yes, and he wept. Okay. What hope did Jesus offer to Martha? I said that, uh, first I'd like to read um, Mark 11 verse, I mean John 11 verses 21 and 27, and I think it gives us a background there. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And I think it was wonderful here, I'm just going to kind of paraphrase that. Martha thought that when Jesus told her he would rise again, it would be in the resurrection when oh, others, yes, you know, would rise. But he told her that I am the resurrection. Yes and I am the life, and he wanted her to know that um, she was looking at the resurrection yes. and the life. Mm -hmm. And he also told her that he wanted to know, did she believe him? Yes. And he mm -hmm. questioned, and she said yes. Mm -hmm. And how many of us, you know, read the word of God, and then do we believe it? Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. But he says to us. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also the hope that your brother, as you said, yes. will rise I again see. because I am, I am the, resur the resurrection yes. and the life. Yes. And if you believe, you will see the glory that's of right. God. And that's mm -hmm. our blessed hope. Oh, yes. 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 Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And to know that he doesn't have to be there right. to, right. to heal. Right. You know, right. Right. They wanted him there, but he didn't right. have to be right. there. Right. Oh, yes, it says just from wherever he was. Mm -hmm. so he could I have think. called him out then, and he would have. So he didn't have to be right. actually there. But yes. because and one thing, one, one point is so beautiful. Whoever believes, yes. not mm -hmm. just one or two mm -hmm. people, but yes. whomever yes. believes in him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. How did Jesus comfort Mary? But first of all, he did not try to de to deny yes. why he wasn't there, you know, when they sent for him before Lazarus died. And he listened to her and took her seriously. And he allowed himself to express his sadness yes. or his emotions along with her. So he felt her hurt and he groaned with her. Mm -hmm. And he groaned in his spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes. And was trouble. He showed his trouble. Oh, yes. yeah. mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. by That's raising me, her brother from the dead, you know, mm -hmm. that shows a lot of compassion and love. And sympathy, yeah. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. How does each sister communicate that she believes Jesus? Martha believed in Jesus by telling him that she knows 
whatsoever Jesus asks, God will give to him. And she also responded that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And Mary believed in Jesus by showing her grief, mm -hmm. her, um, how emotional she was, mm -hmm. and by, you know, falling down to her feet, I mean, to his feet to worship him. Mm -hmm. Does anyone else have anything to add? And, and, and like we've always been, like we've been saying throughout this show, that Mary did express much faith. She yes. did believe, yes. but it was kind of a weakness because, as I mentioned earlier, she was feeling that he had to be there yes. in order to heal or to raise her brother Lazarus. Okay. To what degree is God's glory and believing him central in your life? Well, to me, every degree, every yes. degree, because he has definitely proven himself to me in every aspect of my life. So, I, I said to the nth degree, he is yes. definitely I central see. in my life. Mm -hmm. uh, where he leads me, I, I certainly want to follow right. his lead. Yeah. And it's a I test of our faith and our trust in him, and we all grow daily. Mm -hmm. So whatever your will is God, not mine, mm -hmm. will, your will be done. Mm -hmm. And I said that uh, he makes everything possible. When things mm -hmm. seem hopeless, he makes them possible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, he makes everything well and better in my life. And I, I can't help it but saying, have your way, Lord, mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. it is, have your way, mm -hmm. Lord, and have your mm -hmm. way, my soul. And just trust in him and be faithful and to stand firm no matter what the situation is. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll continue. I'll continue with the questioning. Um, how can you help others believe God and see some of his glory? I do it by just simply testifying to people mm -hmm. as to what I personally know that God will do, what he's done for me. You know, I've been through a lot of circumstances where there was sickness and hopelessness uh, in my family life. And I know that when I turn to God, when you sometimes you are like backed up in a corner and it's kind of like there's no answer, there's no way to go. Mm -hmm. And you have to rely on your knowledge of who God is and what the Bible promises us that he will do for you. Exactly. You know, you learn to, to to say, you know, the Bible says to me that if I pray, if I leave this in the hands of God, he's going to fix it for me. Mm -hmm. And you start to do that. You start to pray mm -hmm. and you start to trust mm -hmm. in God that he's going to solve the situation. Mm -hmm. And in every case he does, mm -hmm. a lot of times it might not be what you think yes. mm -hmm. should happen, but God does it and he does it best. Mm -hmm. And you look around, I've had problems where it's, it's like, how is this going to be solved? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen mm -hmm. with this? Mm -hmm. And I'll pray and God will come in and he'll do something. It's so easy. I've had a really uh, uh, terrible problem that it's like, what's the answer to this? Mm -hmm. And God fixes it oh, and he yes. does it. Mm -hmm. I've said to friends, uh -huh. God will do things mm -hmm. so slick. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you wouldn't have thought of this. Awesome you don't know how he did it. Right. And he does it. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. And like I said, and how I, can you help others believe God and see? And like I said, I yeah. got a story. I, I got a story to tell. Yeah. 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 And I said, by the life I live, yeah. Yeah. my life speak yeah. to others. Uh -huh. I cannot talk one thing right. and then live another thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if they can see Christ in me mm -hmm. by what I say and right. do. Mm -hmm. And I, I think also, don't be afraid to share your problems with certain people. Not everybody, because exactly. everybody's exactly. not on your yes. level. Exactly. But yeah. if you see a sister or brother going through something, and nine times out of ten, you've gone through it too, and you can share that and let them know that God will pull you through. And He w anything that you ask Him in faith, He will reward you and take care of that. So don't ever be afraid 
to, well, I don't want to tell this, I don't want to tell that, I want everybody to know my business. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't have to be everybody. Mm -hmm. It's somebody who's godly. And talk to them and let them know, if he did it for me, he can do mm -hmm. it for you. Yeah. Yeah. And be yeah. so, be humble. Don't mm -hmm. criticize. Because yeah. when you share people, um, your testimonies, and make sure you know um, that um, the light is with you, that God is always with you no matter yeah. what. Mm -hmm. And make sure that, you know, you have Jesus in your life, mm -hmm. you know. Don't come at people being false mm -hmm. and having a, a, a fake spirit whatsoever. And also to be pretending to be better than they are. Because mm -hmm. we're all yeah, sinners. Absolutely, yes. I want to go back to something you were saying about, well, you can't tell everybody, you know. So mm -hmm. this is a good question. Whenever we are vulnerable and open mm -hmm. to people about mm -hmm. our losses, there's a potential for them to hurt us. Yes. Mm -hmm. So do you trust Jesus as uh, others enough to share your grief and pain with them? Explain. I, I trust Jesus. Uh -huh. <laughs> I trust Jesus. But, but sometimes, yeah, as being human, we want to share sometimes, you know, but mostly to people who are going through. And nine times out of ten, I say, oh, I went through that, and I tell them, you know, how Jesus pulled me through if he did it for me. He can do it for you. Exactly. Yeah. You had something in. I was going to say that uh, I think you need to know also where this person is coming from. Uh, does the person have your best interest mm -hmm. at heart? Mm -hmm. uh, are they gathering information so that they can run and gossip mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. it? Right. Exactly. And I think we really have to pray about it. Mm -hmm. I've been in that situation where I have said mm -hmm. things that I should not have said to mm -hmm. certain people mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I thought that they had my best interest at heart. Mm -hmm. So I think we really have to pray and ask God. Yeah, we do. But we even really if they can. don't have your best interest at heart, I still think God can take care of it. Mm -hmm. But Maybe you can it, be it, hurt Oh, also. you can be hurt, exactly. but yes, mm -hmm. that, yes, that is very true. Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. first and foremost, yeah. I, I trust Jesus trust before Jesus. I trust anybody. Because yes. yes. right. 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 guess what? He knows exactly what's going on exactly. before I even go That's to right. him about it. Yes. Yes. But then, too, I look at um, a righteous person. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for the spirit of discernment. That's yes. it. Right. Because yes. he has given me that spirit of mm -hmm. discernment so I could tell, mm -hmm. you know, especially if it's someone that I, I want to share mm -hmm. something with, I can go. Because mm -hmm. the effect of fervent prayer of the righteous, righteous. Mm -hmm. availeth yeah. much. Yeah. So. You know, even if you have, it doesn't say that you just not turn against everybody, right, but right. use that spirit of discernment right. to, and go to a righteous person because then yeah. their prayer um, could help you. And that old well. saying, a dog that brings a bone and carry a bone, you have to watch out for that. <laughs> you, know, you know, a practice that I have uh, when I've had situations that was of a health issue where I was going to a doctor and maybe something serious was gonna go on. Mm -hmm. Most people will, will call their friends and they'll cry and they'll mm -hmm. hum-haw about it. I have learned to teach myself that this is a problem that God needs to solve. Exactly. I don't yeah. need to get on the phone yeah. and yeah. call everybody. Yeah. <laughs> I had once a uh, situation where the doctors thought it was something wrong with my heart and I had called mm -hmm. a friend and told her what the doctor said and and I called another friend and she said, well, did you tell your children? Mm -hmm. I said, you know one thing, I have talked about this long <laughs> enough. <laughs> I'm not going to call another person. Yeah. I'm through with this. <laughs> I'm going to say my prayers and let God handle it. Exactly. And that's exactly what happened when yeah. I got to the hospital, yeah. the medical staff, the doctors, the people were wonderful yeah. and it turned out that there was no serious yeah. problem. But, and, there, yeah. Yeah. but Paul writes that it, uh, you should gather people, if there's something you know, going on with you, gather the people in church to pray for you, yeah. but they have to be the right kind of people. Well, well, no, yeah. Yeah. But, sorry to cut you off ladies, but we're getting <laughs> toward that end. And to our studio audience, I mean to our TV audience, if you've just tuned in and you see these ladies here talking about Mary and Martha the Bible, you don't know what they're talking about. Well, we want to give you, to summarize what we've been discussing. We are Christian Sisters, and this is Christian Sisters Fellowship. So I'm going to ask Joanna to give us, to, to summarize what we've been discussing. Okay. This is a story of Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. And they were very uh, loving and devoted to Jesus, and Jesus also loved them. Uh, Lazarus became ill. And um, they, uh, Mary and Martha, siblings, sent word to Jesus to come and see about him. But Jesus was like two days off, and he delayed. 
this was for the glory of God. His sickness was not unto death. But uh, Martha came first to Jesus wanting to know, uh, why didn't you come while he was still alive to heal him? Uh, whereas Mary uh, came with a humble spirit, fell down before Jesus, and Jesus moaned and wept with Mary. And uh, Mary said, uh, Jesus asked Mary, where is Lazarus? And he told Lazarus to come forth. He was wrapped in uh, his death clothes, the wrappings, and he came forth. And so this is a lesson for us to believe that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Amen. 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 Okay, and now to our TV audience. You know, this is my favorite part of the show because it's the appeal for salvation. We are Christian sisters and we know what the benefits are for loving and having Jesus as our personal Savior. So we'd like to invite you to our family as a Christian. So you know, Romans 10 and 9 said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Yes. So if you don't know him as your personal Savior and you've never invited him into your heart to save you, then you can do it right now. Just repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for my sins. I believe you are the Christ, yeah. the Son of the living God. Come into my heart. I want to be saved. If you pray th that prayer sincerely, guess what? You are saved. So we want Amen. you to tune in again. And remember, to God be the glory. Amen. Amen. Amen.